Hello everyone. Uh, this video I'd like to discuss the item assembly structure feature of the item master record. Uh, this is a really powerful feature that can uh, save a lot of time and it can communicate a lot of information. So right here I have an item master for a Bombardier M7 locomotive. Uh, it's just one I grabbed out of IBM's uh, demonstration site, demo site. So it's not too filled out, but it's filled out enough. It's rotating and it's active. So that's pretty much all we need for this. We're going to go to the item assembly structure tab. Uh, and here we can see the current level and it doesn't belong to anything. So this is the topmost level. And here we have children. So it's, it's real simple. We're going to say, okay, select value. Now here's, you know, 358 things that can uh, have been marked spare parts that I can pull in. So I'm going to do pressure pump. Now the pressure pump is an asset, so I can only put one at a time. So if I wanted to actually have two pressure pumps in my locomotive, I actually have to select it twice. Whereas let's see if I can find an, a non-rotating item. Uh, fuel filter element. See here, I can put in 10. And I click in our marks field and it takes it. So assets you have to do individually and inventory you could do multiples on one line. So let me go ahead and let's see what else I can find. 24 volt DC motor and that's an asset so that's going to be one. And let me see if I can find one more inventory line. Uh, window pane pipe gasket that seems reasonable so I'm gonna put three of those now I'm gonna go ahead and click save so there we have a item assembly structure uh, some places would also call it a bill of materials uh, I've actually I worked for a company that we actually changed the name item assembly structure to bill of materials everywhere because it, we had a uh, we were facilitating a military contract and uh, the military used bill of materials as their description for this this action this process so here we have uh, pipe gaskets uh, filter elements and then we have uh, three separate assets two of them are pressure pumps and one's a 24 volt DC motor now you're saying okay what do I do with that well first on its own right here this information is great because uh, if I'm looking for what makes up the, the locomotive do I want to make sure that I buy the right pump or that I'm identifying the right pump or the right motor or the right gaskets or whatever I can see this information all right here so if I ever have any questions am I using the right part I have to look here and say is this part associated in the item assembly structure and if it is then I know that I'm using the right right parts or the right sub assemblies or that I'm right ordering the right parts and sub assemblies and a purchaser would use this information as well they would make sure, that, okay, I need to make sure that I'm buying this pressure pump for this locomotive. Now, to further use it, uh, the M7L, we're going to go to the assets application. And this is, this for me, I, I love this. Uh, I've actually been a super user and used Maximo for running a warehouse. And I, I had to build it all with, without the ability to do things through the back end, the MIF or the MIA. So... I've had to use this feature, which it, it's a real lifesaver. So here we have an asset record. We're just going to make a new one. And before I start adding all this information, I'm just going to paste M7L in here. And I'm going to tab out. Automatically, it's going to bring over all this inf or the, the description over here. So I'm just going to just put M7L004. Uh, now... <laughs> It's not a completely filled out uh, asset record, but it's going to do for now because we're going to look at spare parts and there's nothing, right? So in, in the assets videos, I believe I covered, I could just click new row and start adding things and then click new row here or select spare parts and just, just add it individually. Or uh, this is the time saver, apply item assembly structure. Now it's going to say, okay, I'm going to use this item hierarchy uh, you're at the top level here's three assets that I'm gonna make for you 
What's the GL account? What's the rotating suspense account? And what asset numbers do you want me to use? I'm going to click auto number all. I'm going to leave the GL account information empty. Uh, but this would be a great time to put it in there because it's easier to put it in here than travel in all three asset records. So I'm going to hit OK. Maximo is going to think about it for a while. Now I have right here. This is the spare parts that are associated with this equipment. And this is on board. This is how many have been issued thus far. I'm going to open this line up. Quantity issued. And here's some remarks. Here are the asset records, right? Uh, since we're not, since we didn't put this uh, asset in a location, this isn't going to be a location, right? Uh, I, uh, I'm beside myself right now because I dislike when any asset isn't in a location. Uh, but for purposes of training and, and, and time, we're just going to go ahead and pretend that this is all somewhere. Uh, I guess it's like a Maximo OCD thing I have. So here we have, we have the, the asset record and pressure pump. And in Maximo, we can just act, just go right to this record. And we see here the spare parts for that. We haven't assigned any uh, spare parts for it, but we can see here's the asset status, not ready, just like the parent. And here is the parent. We go back right to the parent. We can see the status is not ready, but we can see the spare parts. And there it is. That is the beauty uh, for me of the item assembly structure. Not only does it convey Am I using the right parts or am I buying the right parts for sub-assemblies? But I can apply the item assembly structure right at the asset page and build all of my sub-assemblies and, and create all the spare part list right there on the asset page. So it's just another point of reference because some of your, your people in the field, your technicians, they don't have access to the item master application, but they might have access to the assets application. And if they do, this saves them a lot of time and, it, and again, it ensures that, that the operation is has all the information to be as accurate as possible. Really good stuff. Uh, uh, I, I might be might be geeking out here, but but really, uh, and I guess it's uh, I adore it because it's it's saved me so much time. I really hope it saves you guys some time. I hope this video was was worth the time you invested in watching it. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please put them down below, and I'll do my best to get to them. Uh, and as always, thank you for watching.